This is Elliot Eisenberg of Graphs and Laughs, here to catch you up to date on the latest in residential sales data for August. In Hillsborough County, year-over-year sales prices slipped 5.6% and multifam prices slipped 82 Similarly, sales activity, while it increased a skosh, 3% for single fam, that was the largest sales activity increase across both types of properties across all three counties. Multifam sales activity slipped 6.9%. Similarly, pending sales activity also slid 4.7 for single family and a larger, much larger, 22% for multifamily, but yet that was the smallest pending sales decline across all three counties for multifam units. In terms of months of inventory, it's up to 3.4% for single fam, a year over year rise of almost 62%, and it's 4.4% for multifam, a rise of slightly over 91%. Lastly, the sales price as a percentage of the original listing price slid to 96.6% for single family and 95.4% for multifam. This is data that's clearly indicative of a weakening market. In Pasco County, single fam home prices fell 1.3%, but multifam home prices increased three tenths of 1%. That was the best multifam performance across all three counties. Sales activity slipped just two tenths of a point for single fam and rose 1.4% for multifamily. That was again, the, the best multifam performance across all three counties. Pending sales rose seven tenths of a point on, for single family and for multifamily, they fell almost 24%, the median decline across all three counties. In terms of months of inventory, it's up on the single family side, up 84.2% and now sits at three and a half months and up 85% and at 3.7 months for multifamily. Lastly, sales price as a percentage of list price was 96, fell to 96.8 for single family. That was the best single fam performance across all three counties. And it slipped to 97.5% for multifam. That was the highest percentage, even though it fell across all three counties and both types of properties. Data here suggests a mildly weakening market. In Pinellas County, single fam home prices went up 1.2%. Well, not much. That was the single best performance across all three counties and both types of properties. Multifam home prices slid 11.6%. In terms of sales activity, it increased half a percent on the single fam side year over year and slipped 20.5% on the multifam side. Pending sales activity rose 1.6% in Hillsborough County year over year. That was the best performance across all three counties and both types of properties. Multifam pending sales activity declined 29.1%, the worst across all three counties. Months of inventory now sits at 3.9% on the single family side, up 105.3%, and at a large 6.3% and up 103.2%, on the multifam side. The large increases in inventories have not surprisingly dampened sales price as a function of list price. It slid to 94.4% on the single fam side, the weakest across all three counties for single fam, and to 92.3% on the multifam side, the weakest percentage across all three counties and both types of properties. Here in Pinellas County, we see single family sales and market weakening, but we see the multifam market weakening substantially more. Turning our attention to the national economy, GDP continues to grow, albeit more slowly. As a result of that, or because of that, inflation steadily is declining, but most importantly, unemployment is continuing to rise. On the inflation front, after a scare in the first quarter of 24, inflation has continued to come down slowly but steadily. And I expect that by the end of the year, inflation's in the low two, somewhere 2.2, 2.3, 2.35, somewhere around there. The more worrying problem that the economy now faces is unemployment. It's risen from its trough of 3.4% to now 4.2. And the last four or five months, it's gone up quite rapidly. This has caught my attention, certainly, and of late, it's also caught in the attention of the Fed. And they manifested their concern by reducing the Fed funds rate by half a point just recently at their last meeting. This is because they're concerned that unemployment is rising too rapidly. I expect 
that the Fed's gonna cut rates at the next meeting in November and the following meeting in December. I've got a quarter point cut for each meeting penciled in right now. But between now and then, we'll get more data on inflation and most importantly on unemployment. If unemployment continues to rise, the Fed may well cut rates by more than they have. That's the key thing. Now, what's also important to point out here is that 10-year treasury rates have already fallen by a full percentage point from where they were four or five months ago, from about 4.7 to 3.7. And similarly, 30-year mortgage rates over the last four or five months have also fallen by a full percentage point, maybe more, from 7.1 or 2 to now about 6 or 6.1. So interest rates on the 10-year and the 30-year have both fallen by a full percentage point or more, whereas the Fed only recently cut rates by a half point. What that's telling us is that the market expects the Fed to cut rates more in the near future. As I mentioned before, I expect them to cut a quarter point in the meeting in November and the meeting in December. If that comes to pass, I don't think interest rates on the 30-year mortgage fall much more. But if unemployment gets worse and the Fed cuts more than markets currently expect, then interest rates will fall and the Fed will cut next year. This is clearly not the end of the rate declining cycle for the 30-year mortgage or the 10-year treasury. My concern remains going forward, the fear of a recession. I'm afraid the Fed cut rates too late. While the economy looks good, often it looks good when the Fed begins to cut rates, but yet so far, the economy has remained remarkably resilient. Let's hope it continues to stay that way for a while longer.